are live on the air with Wrestling with the Future. I am joined once again by my esteemed and knowledgeable co-host, Jeff the Ref Robinson. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing wonderful, Angela. How are you doing this evening? Oh, man, if I were any better, there'd be two of me. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so, Jeff, uh, it's been a kind of a busy week in wrestling this week. Uh, what? Let's start with uh, Wednesday. Walk me through Wednesday into the weekend through SmackDown and Full Gear. Okay. Um, Wednesday we had uh, Wednesday was of course a AEW's um, show leading up to Full Gear, getting everybody ready and, and you know for it. And I think everybody's takeaway for the night was Cody Rhodes' pay, uh, his his um, promo that he delivered, and everybody was calling it. You know. Um, they basically said that was his hard times promo. They were comparing it to Dusty's hard times. Right. And, yeah. I mean, as far as like being memorable and, and driving home, this is what I'm here for. This is what I'm going to do. And, you know, he made it. I'll, I'll say this. If you were anywhere near Baltimore, he made you want to buy a ticket. And if you didn't live near Baltimore, he made you want to buy the pay-per-view. So, yeah, they said it was close, the closest to a shoot that, the, that they've ever heard. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was passionate and you felt it. You know what I mean? Like, he came across as, you know, I, I, I need this. I need this world title. And, this, you know, this match means everything to me. And, you know, against, you know, I, I'm betting on myself so much. So I, I will say this. I will guarantee if I don't win the world title on Saturday, no more world title shots for me. Now, Jeff, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is he trying to separate himself from Dusty? No, I don't think so. I think, if anything, he's trying to embrace him even more. Somebody brought up that point that he's trying to say, look, I'm Cody. We're not, this is not about Dusty. You oh, know. oh, no doubt he has. I mean, he's tried saying, but he doesn't want to even get away from the shadow of his, of his dad. In fact, the gorilla position is called the dusty position there. They, um, he bring, I mean, if you're trying to escape the shadow of your dad and you're trying to get away from it, why do you bring him up at every interview that you give or every chance that you have? Why do you consider, and not that I yeah. have with it. Well, that's a real I, good point. That's a, that's a really good point. Not to mention, you know, it, it, and now granted, it, it's not stupid. By any means, but when you surround yourself with the legends that he does, your Arn Andersons, your Tully Blanchard, your Rock and Roll Express, those guys all had ties to his dad back in the 80s. Yeah. Whose brain's better to pick than, you know, the guys that are with him? You know, sure. Of course. And well, he's got, you know, the, the best minds in the business working there. But, I mean, truth be told, is Cody's got the pedigree to really go out there and, and do it. Um, no, no doubt about it. And 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 I mean, I would, you know, he's trying to carve his own identity out there, but he also embraces where he came from, is what I, I, I would say. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you would almost have to think you were crazy to try to separate himself from the shadow of Dusty. I mean, let's be honest, Dusty was physically. Larger than life, but yep. in the business, you know, now legendary, yep. larger than life. I, I mean, he's I mean, cast a very, very large shadow. And yeah, I mean, was, this is dusty freaking roads. For, yeah, you know, for crying out loud. You know, I, I, in all honesty, I think, you know, when people, they want to talk about your stars of the 80s, they bring up your Hogan and your Flair and your Savage and your Piper, but Dusty's always mentioned in there somewhere. Always. And, I think that Dusty kind of got overshadowed to a point um, during the mid, to, you know, early to mid nineties. You know, kind of think he even maybe even felt like he was being put out the pasture, so to speak. And then they had him as a color commentator, and you know, and then the WWF. I mean, whether you like him or WWE, whether you like him or not, the last few years have really gave that man the respect that he deserved. With him having the, you know, the NXT and the class, the promo class down there. And he had so much of an influence on a lot of the guy, the, the you know, the kids that you're seeing now, you know, from NXT, your Bailey, your Sasha Banks, your Charlotte Flair, 
you know, the different ones of that initial first class of NXT ones that got called up. Dusty had a huge influence on a lot of them, and they, they even said so. Kevin Owens. Yeah. Kevin Owens is another one. Um, Glad you brought his name up. Kevin Owens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Well, you know, and I'm going to tell you why. I, and you know, and I've said this before, and people who know me understand this, I was not a big Kevin Owens fan. Right. But the more and more I watch him, he really does pay tribute to the old school. He does. He, does. he really does. And, and and the one thing is... Even him, his name, he took the name Owens from Owen Hart. Yeah, he did because he's such a fan and, and admired Owen. I mean, he named his son after Owen Hart. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. That that right there, that... that Enough said, you know what I mean? Like that yeah, sure. Respect that he has. Um, but but no. he's, you know, I mean, let's let's look at the guy. He's not a physical specimen. No. But neither was Dusty. Nope. You know? Uh, you know, he, 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 but he, but you know what? Unlike, and I'll say this, unlike Dusty, Kevin's in there doing moonsaults and doing planches and. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, Things that he should not be doing at his size, and he's been doing it consistently on the indies for years. So yeah, um, no, now uh, then we had NXT. Um, NXT started out hot because you had AJ Styles showing up with the boy or the the OG, the original guy, the the, the club, the right, the, yeah, the, the Bullet Club guys, the Bullet Club, the original, yeah, Luke Gallows and 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 Carl Anderson. And they they showed up to make their challenge to let you know let it be known. Hey, we're down here. You guys showed up on our show. We're going to show up down here. It goes, you know. Part of that I think is to have that star power down there for the NXT guys to give them that little bit of a rub um, by having the stars in there, and that helps. But it's also helping promote their Survivor Series that they got coming up, and. Right now they're making that they're making that Survivor Series pay per view pretty darn interesting as far as the what all they're setting up for in the matches. Absolutely. Oh um, yeah, no no question. You know, so I, I mean, it, you know, NXT was good. I enjoyed it. It wasn't, you know, I I mean, and I'm gonna say this, and a lot of people know what I'm talking about. It was a typical NXT show. And they what, what is what does that mean? Explain. Well, I mean, the what, guys are going to go out. They're going to give you a fifteen to twenty minute match. It's going to be a great match. You know, they're gonna you know do the high flying spots. They're going to hit the you know usual spots that you expect to see them hit. And the show is going to be good from top to bottom. And there's not going to be any you know really any dead spots to where you're going. Oh geez, I'm going to change the channel. Um, Jeff, I, I got a friend of mine that calls NXT cookie cutter wrestling. I wouldn't say it's cookie cutter because, it, well, then you would, might as well say AEW is too. Well, that that's another point that I'm going to make. Aren't they really doing what each other is doing? Oh, or? yeah. It, it, it's really what it is is that style of wrestling that the guy, that the, the new group of guys are all doing. Yeah. They're all, and they're all doing the high flying. Spot after spot after spot, you know, no sell, no sell, no sell. Some mix, it's like a a hybrid of Lucha Libre mixed with Japanese strong style mixed with American. And now we got this conglomerate of mess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean that. And not, I'm not taking away from what they deliver. I'm not taking away from their athleticism. But how much of a story are they really telling in that ring anymore? Well, that that's the question, isn't it? Oh, I think it, it's I think that's part of what our generation of fans miss is that storytelling in the ring to where you grip them and you have them so enthralled from the beginning to end to where by the end of it, you're you even at home are at a fever pitch to where you're wanting your guy to win or if he wins or loses, you're just like <sighs> at that final letdown. You know what I mean? But I, I, I think that's kind of missing right now in today's product on all ends, everywhere around. I mean, I think the only and, and uh, 
I'm not going to go into a full recap of uh, full gear on Saturday. Saturday was AEW's pay per view. Yeah, let, let's let's get into a little bit of it without going down the rabbit hole because we're <laughs> going to do a, a special show later this week. Yeah, where we're going to get into deep analysis of it, uh, and there is a lot there, so we're not even going to attempt to get into. You know the meat and potatoes of it, but let's get into like kind of the uh, um, let's say on the surface. Uh, oh, so oh, give me uh, your um, just just as a fan, Jeff. Give me your uh, as, uh, yeah, your yeah, thoughts. Yeah. What do you think, Omega, just as a wrestling fan? Uh, the Kenny Omega. Now, me myself, I wasn't a fan of it. The Kenny Omega and John Moxley match, I think, went a little too long, a little too gimmicky. And I just don't think that that's Omega's style match that he needs to have. He needs, if as technical as as good as he is, he yeah, be in a hardcore match, he doesn't. Well, need to, I, but he doesn't need to do that though. No, that's what I'm saying. Is he doesn't need the gimmicks to to, to make him shine? Yeah, you're right. I don't think um, Kenny. I don't think Kenny needs it. I think it did him more disservice than good. Mm-hmm. You know, and he beat himself up to, for what? To lose anyway. There you go. And then I think um, the the Jericho Dustin or Jericho Cody match phenomenal. Great end, great finish, great everything about it. Jericho retaining the title and happy belated birthday to Jericho, 49 years old, world champion, and holding a company down and carrying them on his back. And, and my understanding is that that day was his birthday. Yeah, the crowd even started chanting, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Leave it to a funny. wrestling crowd to chant, happy birthday. <laughs> Leave it to that crowd, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I love it. And then, um, so, that, but that match was just, it was great, you know, because... Like I said, most fans going into it were thinking this is going to be uh, Cody's coronation when he finally gets the big belt. He finally gets what he deserves. He gets that world title. Yeah. And then, bam, we steal it from him. And they had. Now, know, let's let's talk about the elephant in the room here, which is the much anticipated heel turn of Maxwell Jacob Friedman. There you go. Now, that's MJF. Now. For people who are not familiar with what that character was doing, was he was basically the Cody, and around Cody and Brandy, he was buddy, buddy, I love you, Cody, I'm best friends with you, Cody, I'll never let anything bad happen to you, Cody. And yet the fans, we all knew that he was a jerk and really a, 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 a heel at heart. And, I mean, he, he isn't afraid to sit there and look at somebody and be like, you, you, you suck, you need to go somewhere. And what are you even doing? Why, you, you know what? You are you're the basic reason why people need to practice, you know, using condoms and things like that. I mean, <laughs> with that, you know, he's a natural heel. He really is. Now, and, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Could, now, this is an insider question. Yeah. Did AEW drop the ball by trying to sell MJF, who is a heel from the get go? To being friends with Cody, that's like the most over baby face. No, because what they did there was they gave him even more heat on Saturday with the, the way that he even turned. I mean, I know fans, everybody was anticipating him finally turning totally heel. Yeah. What more despicable way do you turn heel by perpetrating to be a man's best friend? Not only did you perpetrate to be his best friend, you threw in the towel, causing him to lose. His yes, title, yes. Causing him to no longer get any more world title shots. And not only did you do that, you didn't hit him in the face. You didn't close on him from behind. You didn't do your typical thing. No, you did the lowest thing a man could do in a fight. You kicked him in the balls. Yeah. He sent him a message. Yeah, he you sure know, did. He, he said, I'm a low life scumbag who will stoop to any level to get, to get myself done. over to get the job done that we, yeah. you know, and you happen to be in my way, Cody, of what my ultimate goal is. And that's to, to be world champ or whatever. Yeah. And if I can knock you out of the world title picture, 
Yeah. Better and off and so much the better for me. The better off I am because now yeah. I, if I have if I win the world title tomorrow, I ain't gotta worry about you challenging me for it. Could you exactly. Can't? Now they got so many directions that they can go with this this storyline. Oh yeah. I mean it, it Oh, was, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Let's was, get into Monday Night Raw. Well, what well, are well, they well, why yeah. can't well here, here's my question. Oh, go ahead. I'll 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 well, pull back a minute. Go ahead. Now we have SmackDown on th- on Saturday or Friday, it had been pre-taped. It was from Manchester, England. Um, the British crowd is normally alive and loud, and, and they love their wrestling over there. Nothing special to really write home about. I mean, just your regular matches. I'll, I'll say this. Shayna Baszler from NXT, that girl straight beast. And that, yeah. I mean, uh, wow. I heard a lot of talk today about Shayna Baszler. She's um, it looks like they're going to position her in a feud with the uh, Becky. Yeah, yeah, because that's well, what I'm hearing. Well, that makes sense because Shayna was with Ronda Rousey in the in the UFC world. Yeah, and because of that, they got that built in. I need to avenge my friend. Yeah, whatever, and I'm we don't about. believe that. I, I think that and that what I heard, and again, this is inside baseball. That what I heard is that Rhonda will not be coming back. That's not true. She actually signed a three-year deal. She had asked for time off so that she could try to make a baby and do whatever she's doing right now. Um, but she will be coming back. She, is, I mean, Triple H even says she's due to come back within the next year. Okay, because uh, what I got came from inside, and they said she's really kind of liking where she's at right now. Oh, yeah, but she still has a three-year contract. Well, she's going to get paid on her contract anyway. No, 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 but, I mean, they can freeze her out if they want at this point, honestly. Not the WWE would because she's Ronda Rousey. But they could freeze her out and they could say, you aren't living up to your end of the bargain. You promised us three years of your service. Two of those years you sat out, so you owe us still two more years. Right. Okay, I can, from a business standpoint, I can see that. So, and they, they've done it a few times recently to a couple of the guys that wanted out of their contracts. Luke Harper being one of them, he asked for his release. They said, oh, not only are we not going to give you your release, but you were, you were on the shelf for two years, or the better part of two years of your contract yeah. off and on. So you owe us those two years, so we're going to backdate you to that, and we'll freeze you out and make you sit your butt at home for the remainder of your contract. Well, they you, they still have to pay him. Now, that's true. And, and and from a business standpoint, that's kind of stupid because you're losing money. However... Exactly. That, that you're making my point for me. No, no. But here, here it is. You think about this. Let's just say you got a Luke Carver who would be beneficial to AEW. He really would. Um, and it, so, and in, in other words, what I'm hearing you saying is... They're keeping these people on the shelf and paying them just so they don't go to AEW. There you go. Ah. Now, is that a smart move? Well, this I, I see me as a fan, I don't I don't like it because I want to see these guys be able to wrestle and do what they like to do and, and, and be able to Okay, well then let me ask you to put your promoter hat on. Yeah, promoter hat on. No, I think it's a brilliant move. Okay. Tell me uh, why. Well, because even if I'm not able to use you, I can call on you at any point in time and make you come back for me. No, this is uh, true. If let's just say I do freeze you out for three years, the Irish fan is going to forget about you after one. By year two, and I mean like a Luke Harper. Luke Harper, let's face it, is not a CM Punk. He isn't on that level. He's on a main eventer, main eventer. Right. Yeah. So you freeze a Luke Harper out by year three. Is he even going to be that valuable to AEW anymore? Well, no, he'd be lucky to get him. He'd be lucky to get a match as a as a mid carder. He'd probably be a curtain jerker. And they and then they they're going to tell him instead of four or five hundred thousand that you could have got. No, we need to see you prove yourself. You're only going to get one hundred and fifty from us. Yeah, we'll give you a buck and a half and keep you happy. And and, and you got to prove yourself all over again. Now you've been sitting there for three years. Now if you haven't been going down to the performance center anywhere now you got ring rust yeah yeah you know 
that you know you're asking now that shady as a promoter it is it to a point it is but it's also kind of smart because you're keeping you're keeping them away from the competition why you know, and you may see the value in them in a Luke Harper or whoever and you may go I can't use them but I darn sure don't want them to use them because if they do they may know what to do with them and really put the the nail in our coffin so to speak yeah. and they don't want to do that either I mean. You know that Vince is going back and through his Rolodex in his head and Triple H even are going, okay, who did we lose during the Monday Night Wars that really cost us? Yeah. And, you know, who did WCW even lose that, that gave us a game? Ah, Stone Cold. Right. All right, now, Jeff, let's uh, let bring me fast forward to Monday night. Yep. And then we'll take care of some housekeeping and we'll bring in our very special guest tonight and... Okay. Tell everybody, we do have a special guest tonight, and he is a multiple award-winning, title-holding championship wrestler, veteran of the ring for more than 30-plus years, and we will bring him in shortly, and that is Mr. Jack Victory is our special yes, guest tonight. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I am too. So bring me up to Monday. What happened Monday? Well, and then Monday we'll. Night, uh, I mean, honestly, Monday night they were back. And last week for your, uh, uh, you know, they, they were coming off the heels of a SmackDown where they knocked it out of the park with the NXT, you know, or the week before with NXT, the invasion and all that. Man, brother, on Monday night it was just the same old, same old three hour show of take it or leave it. And. They, I mean, with this Rusev and Lana booking or storyline that they got. Where is I, that going? Where is it? No, I have that, no clue. But I'll say this. And I know that we were talking about Corey Graves' podcast being you know, owned and ran by WWE. Well, Corey Graves called it. He even said that storyline needs to be stopped and put to death immediately last week on his on his podcast. It's horrible. It, it, they, they have to come up with a resolution to it. They have to find a way to get rid of Lashley, bring Rusev and Lana back together happily ever after and be done with it. Well, 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 no, what they should have done with Lashley was brought him in, made him as as a badass that he is and had him be be a challenger for Brock Lesnar on the back end. That would make more sense to me. That would have made a hell of a lot of sense. Instead, they'd rather just sit there and take a character that they got and kill him and just crush him and crush him and crush him by putting two two really good wrestlers and put them and bury them by put you know giving them a stupid ass storyline that they are making a main storyline that the fans hate. Yeah, well, what they're doing and, and whether they know it or not, and I think they're well aware of it, they're killing their careers. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Yeah, they're it's, killing them. Yeah, is they got Bobby Lashley, who for whatever reason they're going, oh, we don't know what to do with him. Well, and he's a legit Rusev. badass. I mean, let, let's be honest, Jeff. Yeah, Bobby Lashley doesn't need the WWE. No, he doesn't. And and here here's the kicker. Rusev, but Rusev does. Well, he does. But no, what I was gonna say is, as much as they've tried to bury Rusev. That man's still over with the Rusev Day chance going. Yeah. So if you're still able to get over, why are y'all trying to bury something that has a natural built-in audience that wants to see him get pushed? Why are y'all going, nope, we're going to crap on you. Here you go. Right. Well, we don't want I, – I think the fans would be happy if he just got a title. You know, they don't need him to be world champ. Just even IC or U.S. champ. But – Anyway, no, that's what I was saying. Raw was just a stereotypical Monday Night Raw show, and, and they were over in England again. Now, here's, yeah. here's, here's what I thought was kind of I, – I said that that British audience is live and loud and, and in charge. They were about to boo Lana and Rusev. They, now, they were pre-taped. They piped the boos down so you didn't hear them come across. Yeah. The but – Yeah, they, they – they, uh, uh, they went heavy on production, big time. Yeah, because what got released on social media, they were getting booed out of the building with that. I mean, you, you I, wow. Yeah. So, um, well, and, and that that just plays into the narrative that WWE 
wants to control every aspect of their product. I I think that they do to a I think part of it is they do want to control they do want to control what the fans are gonna like, what they're not gonna like, but I think the other part is is they don't really know how to I think I mean again I gotta go to the thirty five riders versus a team of five. Yeah. I, I mean, that's really all. Awesome. There's, there's way, Jeff. There's way too many, way too many writers. Way, way too many cooks in the kitchen. Oh my God! Yeah. All yeah. right, Jeff. Listen, we can go. We can, we can go, go all night with this one. Yeah. Uh, let us uh, do some housekeeping. What's going on with Vanguard? Vanguard Championship Wrestling uh, can be found over at VCW Wrestling dot com or on Twitter or or not Twitter on, on Facebook. Uh, uh, Vanguard Championship Wrestling. Um, we got our big show coming up, Tidings of Destruction, December the seventh. Um, and we are bringing in the one, the only Mick Foley. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can uh, find us there on YouTube. And we are also going to be. Uh, they have a live streaming site for four ninety nine a month. And. Um, you can find us over there. All right. I also want to tell everybody, NWA Dog, on December 28th, Hero for the Holidays. It's a, uh, a, a fundraiser food drive to raise, to raise awareness for the homeless and uh, bring your cans and uh, goods with you. The J.J. Dillon will be on hand, Flying Brian Jr. And uh, Tatanka will also be making a special signing appearance. That's NWA Dog in Glassboro, New Jersey. That will be at the Max Fit Center. And uh, just look on their website, NWA Dog New Jersey, and uh, we will take care of all the rest for you. Uh, tonight, we have a special guest joining us live on the phone, all the way from deep in Florida. Say hello, Jeff, to Jack Victory. Jack, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Thanks for uh, thanks for asking. Hey there, how are you doing, brother? Good man. How are you? I'm doing great. Jack, my co-host Jeff has been chomping at the bit <laughs> to tell you his Jack victory story. Can he tell you his story? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Let me okay. hear it. Here, here's the deal. It was uh, back in '91, '92. And right around there, and um, you uh, had just gotten done um, doing, uh, you and Rip Morgan were doing the GWF Tag Team Tournament on ESPN at the time, down there in Texas, uh, it, uh, if you remember the GWF. And um, for whatever reason, I do not know, but you happened to be at, up here in Norfolk, Virginia, on, for a tie, you were at a Tidewater Tides baseball game. With uh, a girlfriend at the time, um, she was with uh, with you. But I, again, I don't know why you were there. It wasn't like they brought you in for an autograph appearance. It wasn't like there was a wrestling show in the area. That I no, I, I have no rhyme or reason why you were even there that night. However, here's the funny part: was I had gone down to the bathroom. I'm making my way back up. The um, you know, back up the bleachers. It had started. It had been raining. They were getting ready to probably call the game. You were coming down the stairs, and I run in, shoulder, boom, and I get about get knocked down the stairs, and I look up, and I go, holy shit, it's Jack Victory. And you said, shh, kid, come on with me. I'll go sign whatever, but just come on outside. Don't make a big deal out of it. And I was like, oh, okay. And, and so I grabbed my buddy who was with me, who was a big wrestling fan, too. We go outside, and it happened to have been, also been a poster night. So I, I grab a pen. I get you to sign the poster. My friend gets you to sign his poster. I'm talking to you about, you know, the, the tag tournament and how much I, you know, remembered of your career up to that point. And, you know, you, you were even trying to be someone incognito. You had on a hat and sunglasses and, the, you know, that you know, by the time that I, you know, by the time that I was done, somebody else had already come over and they'd seen you and they, they were like, Hey, can I get it? You know, can you sign something for me? Well, before it was all said and done, you probably had about a good 15 to 20 people around you wanting you to sign an autograph for you, for them, whether they knew you or not. And you just looked at me, you were like, thanks a lot, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. That's funny. Now, I have to tell everybody, I knew Jack Victory before he was Jack Victory. 
many, many years ago. But 34, 35 years ago, Jet? Yeah, you, it, um, I don't have a calculator. You do the math. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. about 35 years ago, I find myself in Hazlitt, New Jersey. I had fr friends of mine at the time called the Wild Mongos. A couple of brothers that I knew, real good guys, Miles and Steve Hahn. Um, they had a promotion up there in Hazlitt, and they did a show that night. But during the afternoon, they had a meeting in the back of a skating rink. You remember that, Jack? Uh, faintly, but yeah, I, I do remember the skating rink. Yeah, and you were there, and you were gorgeous Jackie Valiant. Well, I don't know about gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> You were Jackie yeah, I mean, Valiant. I, I did. That was that was my that was my very first uh, uh, gimmick. Um, was Jack Valiant, wow. um, and yeah, and, and it was it was only because I was a big mark for the uh, for the brothers back in the day. And you, you had know? the blonde hair. You're you know you're a big guy. You're like six foot five, right? You're like. Somewhere yeah, six four. Yeah, 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 yeah you're. Yeah. Well, I'm five two, Jack. So everybody's six five to me, brother. Uh, I hear you. Now I met you. You were probably like eighteen, maybe. Yeah, probably eighteen. Yeah, something I was like that. 18. I'm I'm a little older than you, but uh, yeah, I was like twenty three, twenty four. But I just I was struck by the fact that, you know, here's a guy that that really should be with the Valiant Brothers. And, and, and by the way, in this little promotion we're talking about, three superstars came out of this group. Of course, Jack Victory, DC Drake, and uh, Rock O' Rock, that everybody would know as the part well, of the Ed Teddy. That's what the Cheetah Kid to begin with. Cheetah Kid. Yeah. 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 Now, you remember now, Jack. that, Jack? I do. I know, I, I know Eddie Miranda and uh, DC Drake really well, too. Um, I, they were both they were both security guards at a prison, um, and and I think I, I don't know really what happened to Eddie Miranda, but I I know I know DC did uh he did well for himself through uh through different promotions, and uh, Teddy uh you know he's he yeah was I, I knew time. I knew Teddy really well. And uh, and that was really a, a shocker when we lost him. Now, now, yeah. now Jack, uh, real quick, um, this is Jeff. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, just, let's just get it out real quick. You know, I'm sure a lot of people probably know, but some people may not know. Who trained you, and were you a fan from, like, the beginning ages of, like, five years old? Were you always a fan of wrestling, or what made you decide, oh, my gosh, this is what I want to do? Oh, God. Um... <laughs> I, I I could not watch enough wrestling. <laughs> I uh, you know I knew I knew before I could even walk. I, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, um. I, I and and I was self taught. I never never uh, never got trained per wow. se by anybody. Really? I, yeah. I I was I was self taught, and and it was just looking at matches, picking up pointers. You know. When um when I left when I left New Jersey and I went and worked for uh, my first promotion was uh, Mid South. Yeah, um, you know. I mean, they, if you guys know Mid South back in the day, I mean, there was the talent was incredible. I mean, thank God, know, yeah, Ted, sure. It you know, good. Flair was there a bunch, but um, you know, the ones that stood out and actually came out and watched my matches was. DiBiase, Terry Taylor, um, oh God, I, I think those were two of the main, main people that watched my match and told me, you know, do this, do this, do this, and, and uh, critiqued it, and uh, when I first hit the uh, Mid-South Sports, uh, Ernie Ladd took me under his wing, and we, um, we, we went up and down the highways uh, together. Um, for I guess my first six months uh, uh, working for Watts. Wow! Which, which you know, really Jack, nice. before even before that, before you left New Jersey, you had an an interesting encounter with uh, my late dear friend and neighbor, by the way, 
the late great nature boy Buddy Rogers. He was uh, he was my neighbor in Cherry Hill. Yeah, I mean, it's that I, 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 Jim, how how I actually got started um, with with Mid South Sports. Um, I, I my dad literally found out where he lived, and I actually went to his house with my dad and knocked on his door. Now imagine <laughs> this. Imagine this. Here's a young kid. 18, 19 years old, goes up to the former world champion's house, knocks on the door, and he answers the door. And he says, hey, I want to be a pro wrestler. I explained to him, I said, you know, I'm wrestling now, you know, um, I would really look to bring into uh, one of the big uh, territories. And for some reason, he, he said, come on in. And uh, I, I, I guess, yeah, I, he, you know, so we went into his house and we we probably stayed there for about three hours. Oh at the, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he has he had an incredible, incredible uh, wrestling room, you know, with all his pictures and what a beautiful house. My God. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah, it was gorgeous. And, and he basically told me, he says, you know, you got to film, um, back then it was VHS, you know, he, you know, you got to film a couple of your matches and, um, send them off to your, to the different promotions. And, um, yeah. Remember the days, Jack, when everybody had to put a tape together, everybody put a tape together. Yeah. If you wanted to go to a territory, you put a tape together and, uh, you sent, I was, I was, me and Angela, we were actually talking about that last week. Cause I, I said, he, you know, even when I got started back in, you know, in the later nineties, when I started reffing, I mean, you would still get told, you know, we need to get a, you know, a tape, you know, uh, of some of your matches so that we can see, you know, how you do and see how you work. Or if the promoter wasn't, you know, there was no internet. So, so, so basically nobody knew who the hell you were. Right. You know, there was was, no. there was no YouTube links to my my match, and here here you go. Here's a YouTube link to my buffer reel. You know, it was you sent them a VHS tape, and you and you hope that they liked what they saw, and and we're gonna bring you in. And that was, I mean, that that was so true up until the internet pretty much started becoming, or YouTube, I should say, became something. I mean, that was you know, I, me and a couple of the older guys in the locker room, you know, that I'm part of now. We always get a kick out of the the guys, you know, the younger guys who who talk about the GPS, or, uh, you know, fritzing out on them or whatever. We're like, okay, yeah, we got buy on road atlases. You know? <laughs> yeah. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jack, so you, how long after you talk with Buddy, do you get a call from uh, from Bill Watts? Well, it was it was actually Bill Dundee. Actually, was his booker at the time, yeah. and. Um, um, Bill, uh, he says he would love love uh, to fly me down. Um, from the time I mailed the tapes, maybe thirty days. Wow! Oh my God, know? that's yeah. unheard of. Now, yeah, was- yeah, it was about thirty days, and you know, it was you sent them out, and you were like, you know, man, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? You know, a week goes by. Oh, it's not gonna work. You know, then two <laughs> weeks goes by, then three. I think it was probably maybe going into a month and uh, uh, a couple weeks even. Wow. uh, Uh, I don't don't know back in the day how many tapes. I never even asked uh, Bill uh, um, how many of you actually get a week. You know what I mean? Of of guys to come. Well, Well, they probably. I really really lucked out. You know, I lucked out. Yeah, brother, did you? Holy shit. It was was so, it was, you know, people, I tell that story to a lot of people and they just look at me like, like, really? That that really really happened. Yeah, Yeah. that's how I got started. Amazing. Jack, Jeff is over here squirming in his seat. So he, no, I, I I was going to curse if he doesn't talk. So here you go, Jeff. What, uh, no, I was wondering what year was it that you're talking like 1985, right? Uh, that you were down there in Mid South, that you got started down there with Watts. Um, what I, brought you to actually earlier than that? I actually went earlier than that. Just on TV until I think around 85. I, I'm okay. pretty sure. Okay. 
What yeah. what brought whose idea was it to bring you together with John Tatum? Was that something that you and him came up with together, or was that uh, was, you know Bill Dundee? It was a uh, uh, Ken uh, Ken Mantel. Oh, uh, Ken, Dutch yeah, Man, Dutch, yeah, yeah. Dutch Mantel's uh, brother. Uh, that's he was uh, he was booking for uh, for Watts at the time, and uh, I, I knew him from Texas and stuff like that. And um, I, I I think. I think I, I did a couple months in Texas and then came back, uh, and that's when they brought Johnny in. Wow. Okay. Now, I'll tell you something, Jack, and, and, and I'm shooting straight with you. I have always thought, and maybe it's just me, I don't know how you feel, but I've always thought that Hollywood John Tatum was one of the most grossly underrated pro wrestlers I ever saw. The guy was fantastic. Never really rose to where I thought he should be. Do you feel that way? Well, um, yeah, but Johnny, oh, I love Johnny to death. I, I talk to him, uh, you know, every week about. Um, but he's probably gonna, he's probably gonna hate me if he hears this. But <laughs> we, you know, every time Johnny did something good, he did three things bad. Uh, uh, you know, when we when we won the world championship, um, the next week he missed the Houston show. Uh, God, and, yeah, and, and yeah, we the got the TV uh, uh, right after that because Bill Watts didn't put up with that BS. You yeah. know what I mean? If uh, if you don't uh, if you don't show up to shows and and stuff like that, and, and yeah. you know, so Johnny. He, you know, he, he could have been uh, so much better. But a lot of people don't know that in 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 the later part of, um, not even the later part. I mean, we were still uh, partners. Um, he got in a head on head on collision. Yes. In, uh, in, uh, in Louisiana, and yeah. they they cut him and his girl out of, out of the trunk of the car. Yeah. So that was pretty much. That was pretty much. Uh, Johnny's downfall. I mean, he was really, really, really banged up. Yeah, for a long is, time. Is that what led to you getting with the sheep herders? The sheep herders were actually before Johnny. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. The sheep herders were actually before Johnny. Yeah, yep. The sheep herders were my really my first gimmick gimmick. Uh, um, way back in the day and. Uh, yeah, they were, um, that was my first, uh, my first really little push, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What, is that what people call it? Let's travel down that rabbit hole for a minute. Okay. Uh, Cause I'm going to go there. <laughs> you know, a couple of things. Bill Watts was notorious, at least the stories I've heard. They said Bill Watts was notoriously tough and he would push people who didn't particularly have talent but had personality, but he would push them not to break them. He'd push them to make them great. Can can we travel down that rabbit hole, Jack? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. you knew Bill Watts. You knew him really, really well. Yeah, I, I mean... I mean, he, he gave me my first full-time job, you know, people, people don't realize that back in the day, we, you didn't fly anywhere. You drove everywhere. Yeah. And we literally did eight shows a week. Mm -hmm. We, we actually did two shows on Saturday, two shows on Sunday, and we did a show every night, Monday through Friday, every night in that Louisiana, uh, South Texas, um, Arkansas area. And it was the same buildings every week, and they would sell out every week. Now, Jack, um, let, let, let's talk about that, because now you're talking about something that I miss greatly, and it's the territories. Yeah, that, I mean, they'll never come back because of the Internet. Um, they're, they're, you know, the independents are really, really doing well right now. Oh, yeah. They're, they really are, you know. Um, if if I was a betting man and, and you put a, a million dollars on the table, 
when when you see uh, when UW not UW um um what's the what's the real fighting uh, what's the um, oh AEW no no MMA UFC oh yeah oh yeah MMA UFC yeah the MMA yeah when when that when that hit I I thought wrestling was gone I thought it was dead. Yep, I thought yep. it was going to be, uh, you know, maybe had a year, but I was, I was completely wrong. And now it, it is, it's on fire. I mean, well, it's, yeah, it's, that's it's funny like because, crazy. You know, a, a, another guy that you know very well, Jim Cornette, said MMA is doing wrestling better than wrestling. They are. They're. They're. Uh, they're. T- they're looking. They're. They're calling spots and everything. It's great, but brother. They took a play. They took a page right out of the WWF playbook. I mean, yeah. I, I Dana White and, and Vince McMahon are, are are in bed together, but I mean, both worlds benefit from it. So, um, you know, we, I, I. I mean. I, I know Dan Severin told me something years ago, and uh, it was right after he, you know, he was, uh, you know, he was the UFC or yeah, UFC five champion, and he kind of gave me gave me the eggy about how all that went down back then. So, um, yeah, Jeff, can you tell that Jeff is a conspiracy theorist? I, I, it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going with what Dan Severin told me. That's all. And well, now, now let now let's let's talk a little bit about this. You know, it's funny because you worked a lot. You were probably the hardest working guy in the business for years because not only did you wrestle as Jack Victory, but brother, you wore a hood for like seventy five percent of your career. So you wrestled a lot. Uh, well, I I did when uh, when yeah. I mean, I I. Had I've always was Jack Victory, but I've had many of gimmicks uh, spun off of the Jack Victory. Uh, and, and the person who gave me that name, I, I went. I actually went to Watts with uh, with the Jackie Valent uh, gimmick, but um, Bill Dundee actually changed my name. He goes, "We can't use the uh, Val- the Valent name." And I, and I I said, "Okay, uh, what do you want to use?" And he goes. We're going to call you Jack Victory, and you're going to lose a lot of matches. <laughs> God bless Bill Dundee. I love you, Superstar Dundee. Yeah. He, was, he was quite a character. What a great worker for a little shit like that, you know? He I'm telling you what. I'm going to tell you what. For, for a guy that's five foot four, he could bump his ass off. Yeah, he could. <laughs> and, and, yeah, very, very talented. Very he talented. really is. So now, was was Watts as tough a guy as the reputation precedes him is? Tenfold. Really? Whatever, whatever, you, whatever you heard is, is absolutely the truth. Um, you know, um, Jake Roberts' uh, daddy was, was uh, Watts' right-hand man, uh, Grizzly Smith. Grizzly Smith, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, and Grizz, One half uh, of the Kentuckians. Loved, yeah, lo- loved him to death, but, you know, some of the guys would, would really test them. You know, come, you know, they wanted you there an hour before bell time. Maybe two, maybe it was two hours before bell time. It was maybe two hours before bell time. And, uh, you know, if you didn't, old uh, Grizzly would go, shake his head, write, write your name on a piece of paper, and you would get fined. You know, you would get fired. I heard that. Jack, I heard that story, and I've heard of guys getting like five dollar paydays. Oh no, what do you know? What do you know? You said stayed on the contract. There's a there, there's a funny story, Buddy Buddy Landell. He uh, uh another he, another he, late late friend. Oh, he, he always loved to be late. Always loved to be late. And uh, I remember it was TV in Tulsa, and uh. I don't know if we just got our check or he he just got his check, but we we were having like a meeting and and he stood up and go Bill Bill goddamn Bill and, I, and he ran over and then hugged the wall I mean uh, straddled the wall he goes kick me in my goddamn nuts Bill but don't find me half my damn paycheck. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
rest his soul. Um, yeah, I, knew, I knew him from Tennessee. I, I spent, uh, you know, 13 years in Tennessee, Jack. So, yeah. uh, so I, you know, I knew, I knew Buddy well. And, uh, you know, and, but Buddy was his own worst enemy, though, in, in a lot of cases. He was. He was. He was. He, uh, he, he chased a lot of women. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, most of, most of us are, are downfall is women. Um, Always, but you know, and then that that gets back to the story in Virginia. I, you remember? I mean, I remember. I remember going to that game. But do you remember how good looking the girl was next to me? She was a drop dead ten uh, bombshell. She, she, man. She, she, like, she, right. she, that's why you said there was no matches or anything. That's why I was in Virginia. I was chasing her out. <laughs> 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 Oh, shit. Now, now, Jack, I wanted to tell you something really quick. You are credited with having the very first ever barbed wire steel cage match where it was you and the Sheep Herders against the Fantastics and Terry Taylor. It was aired on UWF TV, one of the most brutal, bloodiest contests that I've ever seen as a kid growing up. Um, I mean, I, I've heard, I've heard that that was that was the fact that we were the first ever it was you, you couldn't even call it a, a cage because cheap ass watts made it out of two by fours yeah he made it out of two by fours and chicken and, wire and just, wrapped it, and just wrapped it in bob wire yeah you know I mean? it, it was it was not the prettiest thing but we um we did a tv taping and, and they actually showed it Yep. And, uh, yeah. Apparently, we were the first ever uh, match um, um, to air uh, a uh, Bob wire uh, cage match like that. Mm-hmm. And we brought, and they brought, he brought that thing around. I, I swear, we wrestled thirty days straight. In that that I, had, I, had, I, had, I had more cuts and and I was hurting. Yeah. Um, it was yeah. It was me. Sheep Herders against the, the Fantastics and uh, Terry Taylor. Um, yeah, it was every night main event. Um, it was it was very bloody, very brutal. Jack, how fun. many how many cities consisted of that circuit? How many cities? Yeah, how many cities consisted of that that uh, that loop that you guys used to go on? I, I you know, to be honest with you, less than maybe fifteen. Yeah. Wow. Because we we were literally at Shreveport every 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 week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alexandria, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Little Rock, Arkansas. We were, we were there every week, and if not every week, it would be every t- uh, two weeks. Lake Charles. We did Houston. We did Tulsa. Uh, Tulsa in um, Oklahoma City was a, a Saturday shot. Um, you would literally have to wrestle. We wrestled in Shreveport. I mean, in um, Oklahoma City, you would wrestle. If you were wrestled first, second, third, you would wrestle, run run to your car, get in your car with your gimmicks on, and run and so you could start the show in Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and depending, depending on how late the guys were, Grizzly Smith would walk out in the back. You give me five more minutes. Give me five. Give me ten. Give me ten more minutes. They're on the road still. Give me ten minutes more. <laughs> and we're like, oh my god! And they used to sell out every week in every place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's we, um, crazy. That is it, that's unheard of today. Yeah. I and mean, you guys we, only had local television, right, Jack? Yeah, it was. It was. Well, it was. Yeah, it was all. All of those states. Um, yeah, they were. Yeah, you, y'all probably had from UWF what was, UWF was uh, like the number number. It was the second biggest wrestling syndicated show in the United States, right below uh, WWF. I, yeah, it was, and that's I, why well, I think um, Wheel of Fortune was number one, and UWF was number two. That's, well, that's crazy. how strong it was. Because yeah, of the, it was, because it was of, very strong TV. 
And that yeah. the, the, the coverage that they had, that's what that's what led to Crockett wanting to buy them when he bought them from Bill Watts. Right. Was, was because of the amount of TV, the, the television coverage that they had. Now, granted, that ultimately, you know, and we all know what happened off of that. Jack, I want to ask you really quick, what what was it like to be with Missy Hyatt in the walk and riot as she was well known? Um on a nightly basis, I'm sure it's pretty crazy. You probably got at least a story or two in there, and I'm not asking to divulge too much info, but there would be some kind of crazy story that you you had seen. Well, I mean, Johnny, Johnny and Missy was a shoot couple. I mean, they yeah. were they were a couple, um, and and Johnny had his his uh, his ego, and Missy had an ego ten times as big as Johnny's. Yeah. So it was. I mean, what what you saw on TV was. Yeah was basically, you know, their lifestyle. That I was mean, a shoot. Uh, that was a shoot, man. They, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was from sun up to sundown. Those arguing, uh, her wanting stuff. I mean, it oh. was it was it was a shoot. Uh, now, damn, brother. Now, okay, uh, I want to fast forward here really quick. We're going to go, you went, you were part of the UWF buyout from Crockett. You were there with Crockett. And and WCW and all that good stuff. You also, as Angelo had said, a lot of your career you were a mask guy, and you you did take place in a mask gimmick that uh, was rather unique to me because of who I eventually became very close with in my uh, career in life. And um, you were one of the Russian assassins. It was you and um, and the Angel of Death, and Paul Jones was your manager, and you all. <laughs> You feuded with uh, Uncle Ivan at the time. Ivan Koff is a very good, dear, close personal friend of mine, and, and I miss him every day since we lost him a couple of years ago. Um, Fantastic guy, yeah. Uh, I, I remember. I remember. I was in. Uh, I was in world class still. Um, yeah. Angel. Angel was a great friend of mine, and uh, Dusty was booking a WCW at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, they brought in Angel to, just to do the just to do the uh, Russian assassin gimmick, but then Dusty thought he goes, you know, why don't we why don't we find uh, a partner for you and and we'll call you guys the Russian assassins. Um, and Angel said, what, what what about Jacko? And Dusty goes, I love Jacko, and you know they called me in and I, I did a uh, my first match was in um uh, in oh god I did a run in. It was in Georgia. It was in the middle of the state. I forget the, I forget the actual thing. And yeah, we 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 that was a great gimmick. I mean, we did a bunch of you know crazy crazy matches with them. You know the you did the uh, big matches, matches and uh, yeah. scuffle yeah. matches and all that crap. I mean, it was crazy. Jack yeah. also participated in a historic event. Uh, somewhere around the, I think fourth, actually July fourth, nineteen eighty five, the very first Star Wars. You took you took part in that for world class. Yeah, that was uh, that was for uh, world class. I believe Bill Watts. Nope, that would have been Fritz von Erich. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Fritz. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that, that was, was Fritz. Yeah, that was Dallas. I'm sorry. Yep. Now, do you have any good Von Eric stories since you were down there for for a hot minute? Oh man, I, I'd be I, I'm going to fall asleep. Uh, um, I, we we could spend hours and hours and hours and hours. Well, that, that's why we're going to do a two part with you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, uh, I mean, we literally. I mean, it was it was you know not getting. I don't want to talk bad about the kids. No, I mean, no, I'm not asking you to say ill the dead, but I, I think everybody knows it's well tracked what their lifestyle was like. It really is. So uh, they, they went balls to the wall, twenty four seven, man. I mean, Kevin, he lived his gimmick. He did not wear shoes anywhere. I mean, he would show up at the airport with no shoes. He, I mean, it was it was crazy. Um. I got news for you, brother. He still doesn't wear shoes. That's what I was going to say. This day, he still does. I, I heard he lives in Hawaii now. He, he does. He lives in Hawaii. He, and he, he owns sixty-two acres of land in Hawaii. And he has two sons that are 
He's got two sons that are now in the business. Yeah, the Von Erich boys are now in the business, Jack. Did you know about that? No, no, I, 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 I didn't hear that. That's, yeah, that's Jeff, fantastic. Jeff, my, my co-host, Jeff the Rep, is going to fill you in. Jeff, fill Jack in on the Von Erich boys. The Von Erich boys, it's um, Ross and, oh, goodness. I'm trying to think of the, his brother's name, but they've been around for probably three or four years. They they started out initially training with um, uh, with their dad there in Hawaii. He he said, "Okay, you guys at least got somewhat of what it's going to take to get out there and you know maybe go a little bit further here in the business." And he had them get trained officially by Harley Race and Harley Race's school in St. Louis. And then Harley sent them over to Japan where they went to the dojo and, um, you know, got, you know, some more, you know, uh, you know, seasoning there over in Japan. And now they've been brought here stateside and they are uh, wrestling for a, uh, you know, lesser known promotion, but it's definitely making some headway. MLW comes on YouTube and it's owned by Court Bauer, who was uh, at one point in time one of uh, the WWF WWE's top guys. And um, but yeah, and Ross and oh man, what's the heck is his? Uh, trying to think of what his son's name is. Oh, Marshall, Marshall and Ross um, are are the the boys, and they're they're very very talented. One of them even wrestles barefoot as a tribute to his dad, yep. but also because he says he's more comfortable. And now. I want to ask you uh, something else about your world class time. You, you, um, you and Johnny or John, uh, you called him Johnny, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, you and John have faced the Simpson brothers, Steve and Sean Simpson. Yeah, great kids, great guys. Yep. Now the, the, there is a reputation that those two are like legit badass. Like they had like equivalent to boxing golden gloves over there in South Africa. Is that like well, I guess what Jeff is trying to, to ask you is were they shooters? We're not even shooters. To, to, to me, but I'll tell you what, um, you you can put. I mean, um, the, the oldest one. What was the oldest Steve, one? Sean? Steve. One? Steve. No, Steve was the Steve. oldest. Sean was the, the younger. Yep. Steve was a shoot boxer. Um, I was I asking. Younger. Yep. And he literally would give you a hundred bucks if you can. Literally, and and I, I, I've tried it. I tried it a hundred times, and I could not hit him. If I could hit him in the face, um, really? With, uh, yeah, I mean, standing about a foot away, and he was that quick where I could not hit the kid. No shit. Wow. Yeah, and I've hit a lot of people in my day. Um, oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but this is this was a shoot. This was a shoot, and uh, he was that quick. He, he was, yeah, very, uh, very talented, uh, very talented boxer. And, and we had some really great matches with them guys. That's what yeah, I was going to say was, was the matches that you and John had with them. I mean, I still remember. I go back and I watched them on the WWE Network even. And, I mean, because the two of them, they were two. I mean, I don't know how much you remember them, uh, uh, Angelo, or not. But those two, they looked like Bon Jovi clones. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, and and I mean they were two good. They they fit right in with the Von Air brothers. Two long haired, curly haired, good looking kids that had the bodies of, of Greek gods, so to say. And I mean they they just they fit right in there in the Dallas territory right there at that given time. Now, Jack, I, I have a question for you. Well, uh, what? Why did the Lance Von Eric character not fly? Because he won a real Von Eric. He was he wasn't a real brother. I mean, the, you, you could call, you know. I mean, it, it just the people knew who the Von Erichs were, and they just they try to shove him down people's yep. throats, and it just didn't work. Yeah, they know? tried to make him like a, a cousin. Is that what the deal they, was? They called him a cousin, and they said he was. Yeah, they tried to make him a cousin, and it just it just no, no one took it, took it and serious. The, and the fans recognized him from the magazines from coming from Portland. And at that point, they basically, they started shitting all over Fritz and started calling him a liar. And they said, you're a liar. The Von Ayers are liars and you're not real. You know, you're going to sit here and perpetrate this guy as a cousin and he's not real. And then Fritz had to come out and, and deny it. He was like, yep, he's not really a, a, a relative. Sorry, made a mistake. <laughs> but um, I was going to ask Jack, 
What was the sportatorium like? Because, I mean, so many guys have come. Oh, yeah, we heard stories about this place smelling like hot dogs and stale beer. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, there was a lot of lot of spilled beer in those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, what a what a great building. I mean, uh, it's it's hard to really. Uh, Jack, can you can you answer a question? From I heard, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I've heard this story, and nobody can confirm it. You were there, so you would know. I heard a story. That the ring in the sportatorium, that the wrestling ring okay. was permanently placed there. Is that true? I know it was never taken down. I, I was it permanently? I maybe, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't somebody, know. I know. I know the ring was never taken down in the yeah, sportatorium. Somebody yeah. told me that the that the ring posts were in the cement. Yes. yes. No, that is true. Yeah, I know that. I, it, that, that could be completely true, but yeah. I, I never noticed. But um, it, that might be true. Yeah. Uh, do you know, know that? Do there, you know there, there is a YouTube video where Kevin goes back to the old sportatorium before they tore it down. Right. And, and he's walking through and he's going through some of the memories and he even finds a couple of spots where him and his brother had wrote messages back and forth to each other in the locker room. But he commented about how the ring was pretty much cemented down in in place uh, that, because they never moved it out of there. Like I, I heard mean, that, so it was, it's true then. Yeah, yeah, he, he confirmed it. it. Oh, yeah. no shit. I, 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 I heard those stories. I was like, how the that must have been one hell of a bumping canvas, though. That must have been solid, brother. It was very hard. It was very very hard, and and the ropes were always always low. The, the ropes were purposely low so Kevin and uh, them could do their high flying stuff. Ah, really? okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Any, any, anything for the boys. Right. <laughs> and when I say boys, I don't mean the whole locker room boys. No, you're I mean, the fun air. Boys. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I got to now. I I wonder how many fans, and I'm going to give a little bit of a little bit of trivia knowledge here, really quick. But how many people even re remember this? Jack Victory's an original Paul Heyman guy. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, we, me and Paul, hey, Paulie was my manager for a little while. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Was, uh, I, mean I don't know if you uh, would remember that because you had that brief run with him there in the NWA right after, right after they had you team with uh, Randy Rose against the Midnights and Cornette at the at the Chicago pay per view. You, of course, took the big L, and then you came back in Secret Service, Jack Victory. And you were a Paul Heyman. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I actually wrestled twice that uh, that pay-per-view. Yeah. I, I, was under, I was under the mask. I think I wrestled Hayes. I think I wrestled Michael Hayes in one match yes, under the hood. Yes, yes you did. And I, and I was uh, Randy Rose's partner, because um, one of the... One of the uh, Midnight was hurt or something. Oh no, that was that was when Con Condry had um they brought Condry back and Condry he 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 saw the writing on the wall that they were gonna write him pretty much out of the storyline and they hadn't told him that and it made him mad, so he said, Screw you and your stipulation, you just won't give me further pay per view and I ain't gonna show. And he no showed it. And Oh, okay. And um and then but yeah, you did. You pulled double duty that night because you wrestled as the the Russian assassin against Michael Hayes. So, well, I've got a question for you, Jack. What's that? You're on record as having one of the first matches of Shawn Michaels' career. When you wrestled Shawn, did you see some of that early talent in him then? Ooh, good question. We wrestled. I, I when we basically broke in at the same time, and we wrestled each other every night. For oh lord, for months, um, and and we taught each other how to work, and I credit myself on uh, showing him how to work, and uh, there you go. Look what he turned out to be. I mean, he uh, he he really. Uh, I mean, my God, how much money he drew. He, yeah, he, yeah. You know, unbelievable. Now let's talk. About, that's that's a really good segue. You know. Everything now, Jack, and, and Jeff and I have had this conversation 
on previous episodes. But the ability to draw money is all but lost because of television. They're giving everything away on TV. They're, the house show business is basically dead. How does a guy draw money now? Good question. Good question. Um, you're, you're right. I mean, it, I, I think it's more, it's more of a, of a TV market uh, than it is trying to sell out house shows anymore. I mean, the pay-per-view, because everybody knows that these are going to be your top matches. Right. Um, I, you know, it, it's a question that I, I don't, I really can't answer. I don't think it will ever go back to the day of let's build up, build up a TV, build up a TV for a, a big house show. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it, everything is taped nowadays. Everything is, uh, you know, Vince has the, uh, the network. My, you know? my, my problem with the whole television market is that, see, back in the, I'm old school. Back in the day, and that's and that's one of the things that, that Jeff and I do so well. We bounce away, because he's a young kid. He's oh, only yeah. like 40, you know? That's young. That's yeah, I got, I got shoes older you. than him. Yeah. And so, back in the day, when a wrestler drew money, everybody drew money. Now, you got certain guys making six and seven figure contracts and everybody else, you know, scraping. Because they base it off of what you can do for merchandise sales and, and, and getting over. Right, but, but we're, we're talking about a time when Jack worked. No, 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 I understand. Two different ages. I mean, you're, you're talking now where they are more geared towards a pay-per-view and their Monday Night Raw and their SmackDown and their AEW then they're going to be worried about a house show because the house shows they know aren't going to be driving that business as much as it is the merchandise sales and the figure sales. And what do you think, Jack? Has it become too commercial? Oh, yeah. I think it's, it's definitely commercial. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely commercial. But, you know, even those bottom guys in the uh, WWF, they're, they're still, they're, there's nobody making less than six figures there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the bottom line. They um, they're all doing good. Here's what I bothers mean, me. I guess what really bothers me, Jack, is that guys back in the day when when you were working, and guys like you know my late friend Junkyard Dog, my father's drinking buddy, by the way, my father owned a bar in Camden, New Jersey, and JYD was one of his drinking buddies. Oh, nice. Yeah, and. Um, but when, you know, JYD drew money. Ric Flair drew money. Um, you drew money. The, you know, the, uh, the Von Erichs drew money. All these guys drew money, but not all of these guys made money. That's what bothers me. Why are so, so many of our friends scraping by now? And that, that really, that, 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 that gets to my core. Because I'm well, a traditionalist. It's just, it's, just, it's just timing. You know, timing and okay. business. You know, I I remember, you know, from, from the time I broke in, um, um, when WCW was bought out, and uh, then they started throwing contracts in everybody's face. And I'm like, you, you're, you're throwing me a, a six-figure contract, and, um, and, and you don't even know my name. <laughs> Jeff don't make together in a year. 
I was going to say, I'm sure, I'm sure Jacko would take a, a WrestleMania Battle Royal payoff these days and make that 20 grand that they take you. Yeah, I'll be your fucking manager, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I want to... I'll your ass to the ring. <laughs> I want I want to fast forward this really quick, or just uh, you know I I, I mean because we could go down that subject all all, all I know I, I want to bring Jack back for a part two, so I don't want to keep him too long. No, no, I was gonna get him, but I want to take him up here. Uh, you were there in ECW towards their dying days, and you were there with a friend of mine, uh, two, and one of them was a good friend of mine, two guys that I know, um, Steve Carino. And who you were managing, and um, C.W. Anderson, who uh, is very fond of you, and I know you're good friends with both of them to this day. And um, uh, C.W. is, is, you know, I, I know him quite well. Um, I knew him when he got started there on the Carolina Independence and everything. And I was just going to ask you, though, what was it like to be there in ECW in that crazy, crazy? atmosphere that that arena brought i mean on a, a, a every show basis almost um it, it was it was i, I was i guess so grateful that i was able to spend as much time as i did there and to get to get the inside uh to, to get the inside you know i was watching it for what when when paul and uh dreamer Asked me to come back. I was I was in Atlanta, not wrestling, and um, you know, we met up after uh, they they did a show in uh, Marietta at the Cobb County Civic Center, and uh, that's that's basically when I'm just grateful that they asked me to come back, and I'm grateful that's where I ended my career. Basically, it was with ECW. Um, yeah, we and, actually and, spoke and, about that today, Jack. Jeff and I were. Uh, we're speaking about this. Jeff asked me about that wheelchair angle. I said that wasn't no angle, brother. That was a shoot. I said, Jack, oh, right? shoot. yeah, I broke, my, I broke my knee in seven places. Yeah, tell Jeff that story, oh, Jack. Holy cow! It was in a pay per view. Um, it was Jake Roberts and uh, Tommy Dreamer, um, and and I think Tommy threw me over the ropes in with uh, into the match, and I landed wrong. And I broke, I, I mean, I shattered the back of my knee joint out. I mean, it was gone. And, uh, God, I, I remember who, who was, Matt, I mean, who was, uh, was it, it was Justin Incredible, I think, was my partner? Yeah. Yeah, Justin yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And then his, his manager, what was his name? Um, Louis Danger? No, was it Louis? Was it Louis? No, not Louis. Um, oh, Joe, Joe Gertner? No, 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 no! Really built, built like a brick shit house. Oh, black Jason hair. The Sensation. Oh, gotcha. Okay, Jason yeah. the Sensation. Yes, he actually. I, I told him, I said, "You're gonna have to go in and finish the match because I'm done." <laughs> and uh, you know, I try, I try to finish a little bit, but yeah, I mean, it was New Orleans. I, I had all. I mean, I had five teeth knocked out. Oh. I, knee, I, I, I blew my car, I mean, my ligament um, out, and then I broke my leg. So apparently, I pissed somebody off in New Orleans, and they put they put a curse on me because I'd gotten hurt more times in New Orleans. Yeah, in any city than any city. Um, wow. And, yeah, so the voodoo in, in New Orleans really works because it, somebody yeah, it's, it's, real. My ass. <laughs> it's, it's real. real. It's real. I mean, many a times I woke up in Bourbon Street looking around like, oh, Lord. You got with that one night that did it to you. Man, some good times. Lord yeah. have mercy. Uh, uh, uh. I got a quick question for you, Jack. Have you had a chance to see Steve's son, Colby, yet? Oh my God, he's looking great! I just, I just saw a YouTube video. He, he's, he's in the gym, which everybody's told him that he had to do, and he's looking really great. Yeah, and what a talent, Jesus! Yeah, yeah. from the, from the yes. three-year-old, you know, we, 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 he would, he would always come to an ECW, and 
first thing he would do is run and get in the ring and start, yeah. you know, jumping around and and. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jeff, Jeff is a, is very very close to Colby. I am. Oh uh, very dear friend. Yeah. So so proud of that kid. I mean, he, he he'll he'll get a break. He'll get a break. Oh uh, yeah. So call yeah. him. You know, especially with the um, you know, the two hundred five uh, class. He'll, yeah. uh, and he'll and he'll, he'll do it on his he'll own. Be there. Yeah, I mean, be there. yeah, and and he's you know, and the, even with his dad being down there with WWE with the the performance center, he's not even trying to you know push his way through there. As he, I mean, I've talked to him about it, and he's like, "No, nah, there's a lot of guys still here on the Indies that I want to face, you know, and have that opportunity before I take you know they take that dive and." into the WWE world. So, um, Colby, is, you're, you're right. He's tremendous talent. And I mean, we use him here in our local promotion here in Virginia. We, we bring him in monthly and, um, yeah. I, couldn't say, I, I couldn't say enough things about him. Like you said, up and coming and, and it's a matter of time before he gets, he's still, you know, he's still yeah. a young kid, you yeah, know, he's is. still a young kid. He'll, he'll get a break. He'll get a, he'll get a, he'll get a, he'll, get a, he'll do good. Yeah. Um, Jack, I just even, became, even though I don't believe in all that high flying bullshit, yeah. but uh, anyway, you know. But yeah, uh, I, I just what became. Want to say. I just became friendly, Jack, with uh, Flying Brian Pillman Jr. We we hit off a, a, a friendship recently, and okay. uh, and I'm gonna tell you what this kid is. He is so his father. What do you remember about Brian Pillman? Yeah, just just a really good guy, you know, really good guy, really good talent, you know. Um, he was a much better in, in my book. He was a much better heel than he was a baby face. Oh yeah. Even though you, you know he was pushed, he was pushed uh, equal in, in both factions. But I, I think he was a much better heel um, than he was a baby face. But um, great guy. Great guy. We, we went up and down the roads together for a long time. And, uh, you know, I have nothing bad about, uh, nothing bad to say about the guy. Have you had a chance to see Brian Jr. work? I have not. I have not. And, um, and, I, and I always mean to uh, look in YouTube videos. Yeah, of, check him of, out. This kid I will. is, I will. oh my God, he's amazing. Um, it's yeah. funny because he wears... In tribute to his father, he, he wears his dad's Hollywood blonde trunks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. And, yeah. And, uh, and, and in fact, Jeff has a, an interesting story as to how he got them. Jeff, you want to tell Jack that story? Well, uh, well, he has the trunks and he also has the vest. And, and they basically, they came from a lady who she had won some sort of charity auction or whatever um, that, and, and, uh, with it, she won the, you know, the Brian Pillman, uh, merchandise, the, the tights and the vest, of uh, the Hollywood blondes, uh, merchandise. And she basically, she said she was waiting and she saw that Brian Jr. was getting in the business and she really felt like it belonged with him, even though she had won it in a charity auction and paid, you know, X number of dollars for it. She still went and she took it to Brian, gave it to him and said, here, I really feel like you, you need to have this. You deserve to have it. It was your dad's. I don't need it. You need to have it. You know, go yeah, on. That's cool. yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, for a fan to have done that with, with, you know, ring worn gear and it being somebody who's even passed away. Yeah. It's a lot even for the fan. I, so, I thought that was a pretty amazing story when I heard it. Yeah. Well, Jack, I tell you what, my friend, uh, we are because you promised me a part two. I'm going to let you go tonight. <laughs> uh, let's do a, let's do a whole thing on just stories the next time. Oh uh, God, got, yeah. You know, I, I got them uh, from all over the place. So. I know you do, brother, and we're going to extract them from you. All right. Well, thank you, guys, and um, we will talk soon. All Thanks right, tonight. Jack. Thank you so much, Jack. Victory, uh, everybody. Uh, Appreciate Take care, Jack. Jack. Fantastic. Jack Victory, everybody. That was awesome. Amazing. That was an amazing interview. Now you get to see my pretty face again. And mine, too. Amy <laughs> is lovely. Ding. Well, what did you think of that, Jeff? Jack Victory. Uh, Live in prison. I, 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 you know what I got to give him credit for is his recall is still there. Oh, yeah. 
And um, a lot of guys that have been around as long as he has and then been even in the number of matches and taking the amount of chair shots and the who's it's and the what's it that he's gone through. Yeah. Their, their, their memory is not, you know, the recollection isn't like his. And, um, oh, I know. And, uh, it's, it's uh, scary when you talk to some of these guys. It is. And, and, and you know, he, I, I mean, it's, it's easy with somebody like him that's getting that kind of recall. It's easy to sit there and kind of jump all over the place, which I was trying to stay in line and yeah. I hope the fans realize that. I was trying oh, to go. Yeah, down. especially you, because you could go down a rabbit hole real fast. Well, I mean, that, but I mean, I was trying to stay as far as like, you know, year by year of where he was in his career. I know, but you know what, Jeff, there's, with Jack, there's so much to that's, cover. That's what I was just going to say is, you know, I had basically, we, you know, kind of stopped and, you know, jumped around after it, but, you know, up to, you know, we, uh, we just barely touched, scratched the surface of the. Oh, UFC. I know that. That's why we we're definitely doing a part two, and Jack I has have to do a part two. And I, I mean, if not even maybe a part three. I mean, he said he wants to come back with road stories. Oh, for God. He, he told me when we spoke on the phone, and I should tell everybody in in full disclosure, we booked this show with Jack Victory three weeks ago. Yeah, and three weeks ago he said. Let's do a two-parter because I want to tell some stories. And I thought, wow, he wants to tell stories. Most of the guys don't want to tell stories because it gets them in trouble. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I think that he – I'm not expecting him to go into the dirt because you even notice, like, he, he was very respectful of the Von Erichs, you know, when, when yeah. I hung him up. And, oh, yeah. And, and – um, but I, I'm sure he's got some funny stories. They ain't even got to be the sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But and, I, and you know what, Jeff? I think that's more out of respect for Fritz than anybody um, else. Well, I think it's out of respect for Fritz and Carrie and, and the ones that passed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you, absolutely. You, you can't. I, that's a, um, a class guy. That's a class guy. It is. That's what I was gonna. That's what I was getting at. And I thought it was funny was how he. He brought it back around full circle even about, yeah, now you know why I was there in Norfolk that, that night. You know, I was chasing a girl. Now, and, what's uh, funny about that, he, what's funny was, and I'm glad you brought that up, because <laughs> when you brought the story up at the beginning of the podcast, he didn't have recall of it. Right. But right. as the more he started talking... Did you see how it came around again? Yep. Yep. And so, so now you know why he was in Norfolk. He was chasing skirt. Hey. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure back during that time period, uh, had it been any one of the girls that were uh, regular visitors of the wrestling. Right. The, the ones, you know, the, the, the frequent uh, visitors. Um, yeah. You're trying to be nice and say ring rats. I am. I'm, I'm being. I, you know, <laughs> but, but, as as my princess calls them, fuzzy little critters. Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. And she she's like, you know, she'll even tell me she she'll say it jokingly. She's like, no fuzzy critters for you tonight. And I'm like, all right, no fuzzy. I should tell critters. everybody that Jeff is a. Very conservative young man from Virginia, <laughs> and he is politically correct, and he, and he doesn't want to bury anybody, but I will, because I'm a Yankee from the North, and I don't give a shit. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I definitely got some stories that I could definitely share. I mean, uh, one of my, I, here, I'll, I'll share one really quick. It is one of my most favorite that I've ever seen. Go for it. We got plenty. And, and um, it was... Uh, we were, it was, the WCW crew was in town, and I I was with the guys because I had helped. It was right after the pay-per-view, uh, World War Three had, had been here. It was 1997, and I had helped break down the wrestling ring that night. And right. so afterwards, they invited me to go with the crew over to the Marriott bar where everybody was hanging out. Right. You know, for drinks. And I'm like, okay, I walk in, I mean, wall to wall, just 
I'm, you know, holy shit for me as a fan just going, ah! But I look over and I see, here's Mean Gene's old ass. <laughs> and, I mean, he is talking it up with this redhead with the some of the biggest, healthiest lung muscles I've ever seen on a female. <laughs> lung muscles. <laughs> Oh my God! I love yeah, the biggest designers <laughs> I've ever seen on a female floor, and uh, I mean she definitely was was well endowed. And Gene is just—I mean he's just like you know. Just, I mean you could just like tell old Gene was kicking her, you know, just being old and smooth, looking like Frank Sinatra over there in the corner almost. <laughs> and and then he looks at her and he was like, "Come uh, with me, honey. You're coming with me. Come on up to my room." And she was like. <laughs> what are we going to do? And he was like, what do you think? I was like, oh, dude, you are the king. I mean, you just like look right at the girl. Yeah, what do you think we're going to do? You know, you're coming up to my room. It was like, bow down to you, buddy. Oh, God bless Bean Gene. You know, he, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I saw Gene. I've seen Ric Flair, uh, you know, legit six, six women with him at any given moment. Oh, yeah, especially back in the day. You know, and just, you know, handpicking. I'll oh, take yeah. you and you and you. I mean, like, he's at the meat market, you know, honestly. I'll take a blonde and a brunette and a redhead tonight. Yep, that's what I'm in the mood for. That's funny. And it's, uh, yeah. I, so I mean, whose leftovers did you get? Oh, a few, um. I, I I got I got a flare rat one night. That was that was kind of crazy. Was I, I mean because he it was my twenty first birthday. Oh, and I was pretty schnockered, and uh, <laughs> and she had a room at the hotel for the all intents and purposes of hooking up with one of the boys. And Rick looked at her and he said, "It's the ref." You know, it's the rough birthday today. It's his 21st. He was like, how about you uh, show him uh, a good time for the champ? And she was like, all right. That was it. So oh, easy. That was, I, I didn't have to do nothing. Now, you know, being on the indies, yeah, we get a few here and there, but not nearly what they did do there in the big time, man. Uh, they used to say when you were with Flair, everybody got paid and everybody got laid. So true. I mean, he would definitely, any of his cast-offs, if there was a guy that didn't have somebody that night or, or you know, even if you're part of, like, the ring crew, he was going to look out for you and be like, hey, you know, and hook you up for the night just because that's yeah. the kind of guy Rick was. I mean, he, uh, I mean, I, I've been there when Rick is, when Rick has paid a bartender $5,000 to keep the bar open after hours. I've heard those stories. I've actually witnessed those stories. I mean, he's... Uh, you know, we, I will. I will tell you this. You shared your story tonight. On the next episode, I will share my story at the Philadelphia Airport Marriott. All right. And I. I. I'll give you a little teaser. Okay. The NWA was in Philadelphia at the Civic Center. Okay. We all knew where they stayed after the oh, show. Yeah. yeah. So I rented. I rented the bar. At nice. the Marriott, knowing that if they wanted to come in, they, they would have to ask. Yeah. So that put me in a very good position that night, and then that's so all I'm going to tell you now. So right. here's what we're going to do. We yes. are going to say goodbye to everybody for this Good. week. Goodbye, everybody. So, <laughs> goodbye. I want you to plug Vanguard first. Oh, well, let me plug that really quick. VCW-Wrestling.com. Or found on uh, Facebook at Vanguard Championship Wrestling. And again, um, as I said, we got a streaming site, $4.99. That's it, only $4.99 a month. You can't beat that kind of price point. And you can go back and catch up on all the old VCW episodes to get you up to date on where we are. And December 7th, Tidings of Destruction at the Masonic Temple in Norfolk, Virginia on Granby Street. We will be having the one and the only, the legendary Mick Foley coming in. All right, and I will plug NWA Dog Championship Wrestling for December 28th 
at the Max Fit Sports Center in Glassboro, New Jersey. J.J. Dillon, Flying Brian Jr., Tatanka, Breaker Morant, defending his title against an as-not-yet-named opponent, but we will soon find out who his opponent will be. When we do, we will broadcast it on this show. Tell everybody that we have Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Podbean, and, of course, our YouTube channel. We are literally everywhere. Take us on the road, in the car, and on the go. And you're going to hear us everywhere and hear the sweet, sweet sounds of our voice. Absolutely. And we will promise you next week we will have part two of Jack Victory. And coming up this week, Thursday oh, night. Yeah. Well, special show this week. Go ahead, Jeff. Tell them about it. Thursday night, we are hoping it will go down. I'm, I'm planning on it. Uh, recap, full in-depth recap of AEW's Full Gear, along with the fallout from Full Gear, which will be this Wednesday's show. So, And that will be a full show discussion on the fallout of AEW Full Gear. Yep. It will be Jeff the Ref, yeah. Mike Armageddon Murphy, and yours truly, Psychic Medium Angelo. Until then... Signing off. Happy wrestling, everybody. Good night. Good night.